Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fan, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hello, good day to y'all. Hello and good day to y'all. How's it going? My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in to the Basketball Time Machine. I hope you're ready for your weekly dose of NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to take a look at an NBA player of the 80s and 90s that is considered to be one of the greatest, but also has a very rocky relationship with other NBA legends. I'm of course talking about Isaiah Thomas. But before we dive into today's episode, let me ask you guys for a small favor. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and even more important, click the notification button so you never miss an episode of the basketball time machine all right enough said let's get right into it So where do we start? I would say let's start with Eddie Johnson who was one of the greatest shooters of the 1980s and 1990s who's now an NBA analyst. So let's start with him. Standing at only six foot one, Isaiah Thomas dominated like few guards ever have. With his scoring ability, ball handling and legendary will to win, he gave the Detroit Pistons bad boys their rough and tumble identity on their way to back to back NBA championships. the pass of the year. I knew he was going to be special. I did. He's one of the most special basketball players we've had in this league and one of the most unselfish uh, because he could have scored 30 points a game, but you know what? He understood that he couldn't continue to just chuck shots up because he wasn't producing wins. And all of a sudden, he allowed his teammates to play a heavy hand in what they did offensively. He tuned up his defense. They came up with a mindset of how they were going to beat teams, how they were going to get past the Boston Celtics in general, and they did it. And they did it by just playing physical basketball and him facilitating more than just shooting. Uh, and it was an amazing turnaround of unselfishness by a player that we've seen in the history of this game. And it led to him beating teams that other players couldn't beat, quite honestly. I mean, Isaiah. Not only beat Boston, he beat the Bulls consistently, he beat Philadelphia. Uh, he's had success against all those top teams at that point in time in the Eastern Conference, and it culminated into two NBA champions. Now the next player's opinion that we're going to take a look at is definitely one of the most interesting one. Why? Because Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas obviously have this very icy and strange relationship. Let's have a look. I respect Isaiah Thomas's talent. It, to me, the best point guard of all time is Magic Johnson, and right behind him is Isaiah Thomas. No matter how much I hate him, yeah, I respect his game. Now, it was insinuated that I was asking about him, but I never threw his name in there. Based on the environment and the camaraderie that happened on that team, it was best harmony. Would Isaiah made a different feeling on that team? Yes. You want to attribute it to me? Go ahead, be my guest. But it wasn't because the me. thing about Isaiah's handle is most guys who have a handle have a move, right? Their handle. It might be a crossover. He talked to. It might be the step back. It might be the in and out through the leg. Tim Hardaway, wicked crossover. But Isaiah could what what I would call pat it, and he could pat it as well as you talk about making music. Isaiah made music with it. One would be Isaiah Thomas, and we all remember yeah. mm -hmm. the highlight in the Boston Garden of him crossing over Danny Ainge, waiting, telling him to come up, hurry up, crossing him over again, yeah. and drilling a shot in front of his okay, face. I'll give you Zeke. All right. When Isaiah was like leading, the, and like we're way up there and scoring, because they went from an all offensive team to a defensive team. When they had their offensive team with with with, uh, with Isaiah and Kenneth Trapuca, John Long, and those guys. That's when Isaiah had the crazy handle. I mean, but it was always amazing to me how that team went from all offense trying to outscore people to becoming a defensive juggernaut. But when you're double team and in traffic and got to get out with the handle, Magic's Ross, not doing that. Yeah, that's Ross, that's Isaiah. Yeah. That's Shamgar. That's those guys. They getting out. They getting out of traffic with the dribble. Well, with all the guys that we've talked about, there's really only two. Hall of Famers, or at least like perennial all-stars, and that's Isaiah and Tim Hardaway. Most of the names, it's more about the show than 
the actual production. That's why I like Isaiah. If I had to, one guy, I'd take Isaiah because he had both. And whatever he did with the ball, it always translated into something good. Oh. It feels like yeah. cool. yeah. heaven. Isaiah was a guy just like, to me, I put him up there like one of the best guards in history because I had to play against him when they were the world champions, the bad boys, when they were beating people up on the court, physical. His tenacity, his size, his leadership, he's not backing down. You know, my favorite memory of him is scoring all those points. I think it's 23 points in the quarter on one ankle against the Lakers. I don't believe what I'm seeing. He is just showing so much heart and determination. Maybe one of the best we've ever seen in one quarter in finals history. Like, in the finals, like, come on, like, that's, 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 they, oh, that's legendary. That's, that's, you know, that's what makes guys like that Hall of Fame legends and people like you know myself that grew up you know look up to and want to emulate as, as, as a basketball player so i i played with the great isaiah thomas and i knew it i still know it, you know all the way up go that is wow. literally carrying the team on his back magic johnson saying coming up to orchard st Lady mary's and then y'all kind of got to talking and magic say let's come on let's play them in two on two right so for me and then afterwards, he's the reason why I took my dribbling to the other level. You remember you gave me two balls? Yep. You remember? Yep. Can you, can you want to show him? No, go ahead. I'm going to show him. <laughs> can I have that ball? See if you remember. He said, drop one, pass the other. Yep. Drop one, pass the other. Drop one, pass the other. Drop one, pass the other. And I couldn't do it for about six months. And then I started to get it where I could go anywhere, okay. anywhere. He would bring people out and he was cold because Isaiah always smiling. So you think he, you know, he's, first of all, he's a nice guy, but you think, you know, it's going to be sweet today. So he's not letting no little kids score. And he's like, no, you got to earn this. You got to work for this. And then he proceeds to do the machine gun yes and that's why as a big fella like growing up in detroit we talking about guards but seeing like Derek coleman terry mills victor alexander Derek gross big guys that had handle and then you you were a point guard but i mean the centers that almost are your size and we saw you with handles and then zeke came out and did the machine gun and i remember i remember my father telling me just like how you said drop switch drop drop he said 99 percent of the kids in here are not going to listen to what isaiah said are you going to be one that listens Yes. And I remember looking at him going, okay, Dad. And I remember seeing him do the machine gun, and I'm not lying. It was a blur. First time I met him was in 79, and we were playing in the Pan Am games. And uh, Isaiah and I were roommates. And Coach Knight was um, coaching the team. Isaiah was going to Indiana. So Isaiah was just a, uh, it was June. And Isaiah had just graduated uh, from high school and was going to go to Indiana the following year. And I was at the University of Minnesota, and uh, I'd be in my room, and I'd be trying to sleep, and Zeke would say, Cap, I can't sleep. I'd be like, I know you can't sleep. You're waking me up. I'm exhausted, because Coach Knight is killing us with practice. And just, we're having two hours, just two and a half hours, twice a day. Just, wow. I mean, we were really practicing hard. I just want to go to sleep. And he's like, Coach Knight yells a lot. I go, yeah, he does yell a lot. He's, I'm nervous about coming here next year. I go, you know, I say, I'm going to Minnesota. And I'm going to go, so that's your issue. Quit waking me up. He's the greatest pure point guard ever. Him and John Stockton. Magic Johnson is the greatest point guard ever, but he's a, a freak of nature. But Isaiah Thomas and John Stockton are the two best pure, pure. When I say pure, I mean little guys to play the point guard position. They're the best to ever do it. So how good is Isaiah Thomas in my opinion? Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, to me, he's not only one of the greatest point guards of all time, but one of the greatest players of all time. And I'm actually grateful that this guy existed because if it wasn't for him and the Bad Boy Pistons, obviously Jordan still would have been the greatest of all time. But I think he gave Jordan that edge because of, because of Isaiah Thomas, Jordan went to the weight room, gained some muscles, got stronger. So I think he was very important for Jordan's development and also I was happy to have a general on a bad boy team that was basically feared among the league I think that was what made the 80s so great so I'm very grateful for the player Isaiah Thomas all right you guys that was it for today's episode don't forget to leave a like subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on the basketball time machine